What's up, y'all? This is Marcus, and I'm going to do um, Preachers of L.A. episode five. So the so the episode starts off. John, Bishop Jones come, is coming back from Africa. He was there for I don't remember how long, and he's gonna be in town for two days, and then he's going to New Orleans to preach at Essence Fest. Um, so Loretta comes over um, to talk about a Fourth of July dinner that she's having, and you know she basically was saying in the confessional about how she wants to spend more time with him. Basically, she wish she wasn't working so much because she wants to spend more time with him so they can work on their relationship. And so basically, they're discussing the Fourth of July party, and you know they're talking about food and who's who's gonna come. And he mentions that he's gonna invite the Gibsons and the Cheneys, and she's kind of was basically like, "I'm not here for it," you know, because of how everything that went how it went down at the tea party, where they was like questioning her about her and Bishop Jones and all that stuff. So she kind of wasn't here for it. Um. Then it skips over to Pastor Cheney's house. See, you know, he was saying that that was his first day being off in a while. So he was having like a family day at his house. His wife and stuff was cooking. One of the things that he said, you know, I guess, you know, when she she was cooking everything in like the like the aluminum pans, like you can get the dollar store. And he was basically like, you know, taking out the pans because my grandma, that's kind of, time about that's kind of hood. And, um. You know, and my granny don't really care for that. So when granny comes and, you know, he mentions something. When they go outside, he mentions something about, about she would, he would like, just ignore the pans. And her face was kind of like, ugh. Um, and so then she starts discussing the church because, you know, he was saying that he, the church was basically passed down to him. The church started off with his grandparents in their house. And now, you know, they have a church and he's the pastor. And one of the things that he happens to mention when he was saying this kind of overwhelming, because, you know, he was saying the, the more members you have, the more responsibility it is. And so she was basically like, do you think your grandfather would be happy to hear you say that? And he was, you know, he was saying that he doesn't want to disappoint his grandparents. But, I mean, if it's too much to handle, it's too much to handle. I mean, I'm just saying. But, um, so then she mentioned something about him having an assistant. And he, and he you know, long story short, he basically like, yeah, I'm going to think about doing that. So then, um, Dietrich Haddon comes over to see Bishop Jones. Um, he discusses, like, you know, as, basically asks Dietrich about him preaching or whatever. And Dietrich was basically saying, you know, he's taking a break from preaching. Now, you know, and he brings up about Dominique. Now, I understand, you know, because of the incident, he had to, you know, like, sit himself down. But I didn't know preachers can, like, take a break from preaching. Like, I just... Uh, you know, I didn't know that. But anyway, you know, he's taking away from preaching. He's focusing more on um, his singing career. And one thing, they, then they bring up Bishop. And, you know, he was talking about um, about all these places he has to go and yada, yada, yada. And so that's why he's still single. He's basically saying that he don't really have time for a woman because he's so busy. But I feel like if he stopped take, But I feel like if he stopped taking so many appointments, I mean, it don't hurt to tell people no tell people no sometimes when they call you to preach if they respect you enough they'll you know it ain't like they're gonna say oh well, ain't, we ain't gonna call him no more because he told us no last time i mean if they respect you they'll call you again i mean if you're really trying to build a relationship with somebody or you need some personal time for yourself ain't no harm in telling them no i'll have to do it next time or something like that but anyway i feel like he's using preaching to avoid you know whatever or may may come about between him and he and loretta's relationship um I'm just saying. Um, then it's the 4th of July party. The Chaney's arrive first. Then the Haddons. Then the Gibsons. Um, Bishop go. Bishop Bishop Gibson goes to the piano. And he start playing. And so DJ in the confessional. That's what made me feel like he was fake. Because in the confessional he was like. Bishop goes over to the piano like he's the recording artist. But then when they flip back to the party. He's like play it Bishop. Play it Bishop. I was like. But anyway. I'm not going to go there. Um, so then, you know, everybody's eating and stuff, and everybody's talking about how good the food is and yada yada yada. So Bishop, I mean, so Bishop Gibson, like, yeah, I need to go talk to a uh, bishop because you know they say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So he like, yeah, this girl can cook, blah blah blah. So he says he's going to go talk to Bishop Joe's. Excuse me. Anyway, so they go down there and start playing pool. And they basically make up a bet where Bishop Gibson says, if I, if I lose, you can stay single. If I win, you have to marry Loretta. I'm thinking to myself, how do you think Loretta would feel if if he actually went up there and told Loretta, you know, I want to move forward, let's get married. And then later on, she find out that he only proposed, you know, 
you know, it was because of a he lost a bed. How do you think that would make her feel? Like, I mean, you know, you know, Bishop, I mean, and Dietrich and Pastor Cheney, they both felt like Bishop Gibson was way out of line by doing it. Like, you trying to pressure him into getting married? Like, let him, let him do what you know. Let you work, you work on you and your wife. Y'all been married thirty one years, but this is probably some more stuff y'all can work on. If he wanted to be single, if he wanted to just be friends with this lady, like. Anyway, um, let me see what's next. Got a play pool, make a bed. So then they go up on the roof, you know, to watch fireworks, yada, yada, yada. Dietrich and Dominique leave because he said they had to catch an early flight to go to the Essence Festival because he's performing. So uh, Lady Gibson and Lady Cheney pull her right to the side and start saying something about, you know, her food was good and yada, yada, yada. And then Bishop... Gibson's wife was basically like, I remember last time I told her your merchandise was good, but now I'm saying your merchandise is superb. And then they were saying, it's almost like you are the lady of the house. And she's like, really? Well, Loretta was basically like, every time I turn around, you, y'all bringing up us, you know, this and that. So, you know, but, but, you know, like, but then, like she said, I don't have the ring yet. And I just feel like they kind of like, kind of like mother gooses, mother geese. But anyway, um... Let me see. Jones okay, so after the party, Loretta comes back downstairs and talks to Bishop Jones about, you know, the ladies pulling her aside, and she's basically like, basically like, you need to make up your make a decision. It's kind of like, it's kind of like she's pressuring him because they're pressuring her, to me, and she's basically like, how can I expect more from somebody who doesn't want to give more? Yada yada yada. It seemed like every time. She brings up the issue of them moving forward. He comes up with some excuse. I, I mean, to me, it seems like... I don't know, but anyway. Let's see. So, Pastor and Maish and uh, First Lady Cheney, they have a talk, and she basically was telling him, you know, that she wants to be his assistant. Of, he's kind of... You know, like, I don't know because, of, you know, I don't want people to look, think it's like it's favoritism, but she's like, you know, because she knows. And I and I get where she's coming from, but I also get where he's coming from. She was saying that she thinks she's the perfect one for the job because, you know, they've been married and in ministry together for so long. And, you know, she knows him. She knows how he operates. She knows how he like. She knows how he wants the church to be ran. She knows, you know, what he likes and what he dislikes, what he approves of and what he doesn't approve of, how, what his standards are as far as the church is concerned. So, you know, they talk about it and whatever. Um, Dominique, they go back to Faye's house. I thought it was... Yeah, Faye's house. Dominique is packed and leaving. Now, first of all, I, they married and she ain't moved in yet. Why is she packing clothes from her mom's house? I thought they would be living together by now. But anyway, um, they and they discussed, you know, she was telling them about New Orleans. I think Faye asked her, was she preaching? And she was like, well, he's not really preaching right now. He's just working on his singing career and yada, yada, yada. She kind of feels like him preaching would kind of, they kind of, well, he, well, no, it was Dietrich that kind of feel like him preaching would kind of hinder his singing career. But I feel like you was preaching before. Well, I mean, he was, I think he was singing at the young age, but he was preaching before he became Dietrich Haddon, the gospel singer. So it's like, if anything, you, you, the singing is hindering your calling to be a preacher. And I feel like he's using his singing career to kind of hinder him because he's kind of, you know, because of everything that happened between him and Dominique with her getting pregnant is, you know, he's kind of not preaching anymore. And I feel like he's using his singing career to kind of like as an excuse not to go back into that arena because I mean by now you know people have you know I feel like people will actually be able to listen to him now again you know but I mean to each his own um did you get Dominique arrive at the suite yada 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 it was a nice room you know he's talking about let's take a shower to take a shower together to wash off the uh travel smell or whatever I was like Y'all married. You could have just been like, let's get, let's go get in the shower and get busy. I mean, she said, mentioned something about she got to fix her hair. He was like, that ain't your real hair? Now, I think he was probably just joking because ain't no way in the world you've been dating somebody for just some two years and you don't know she wearing weave. But anyway. But I thought the, I thought the interaction was cute. Um, They go out on the town. They approach a homeless woman. They see her with a homemade cardboard cross with it. 
with the scripture of John 3, 16, you know, they walk up to her and she was talking about how she'd been walking all day, spreading the word and her feet was swollen, yada, yada, yada. She was saying she don't have no money. And she was saying, you know, because she don't ask for money. She's believing God to make her way. Um, Dietrich prays for her and lays hands on her and he sows into her ministry. Then the dude that works, I guess, at the restaurant or the owns the restaurant that she was sitting outside of. He was basically saying, you know, she's good people. We take care of her. We look out for her. And Dietrich was basically like, well, God's going to bless you for blessing her. And he prays for him and they keep walking. And, you know, I thought that was nice because, like I said, when Pastor Jay prayed for, prayed for old girl with the panic attack, I was like, you know, you can't be so caught up in yourself that when st when opportunities like that arrive to minister to people and pray for people that you be so caught up in self. Like, a teacher could have been like, look, we on a date. We ain't got time to be worried about her and this and that and the other. But, you know, it's like, you know, they was, when you have a heart for ministry, you look, you, you put others' needs before your own. So I thought that was nice. You know, he get, he get a couple of brownie points for me. Um... Pastor Cheney meets with the board members about Maisha, you know, he discussed the assistant pastor. Basically, they wasn't here for it. One lady was basically like, you know, she don't really, she, she was like, I agree that you need an executive, executive pastor, but I don't think it should be your wife. And another man was basically saying, like, people might think it's favoritism. Like, oh, Lord. Oh, no. Anyway. Um, the man was basically feeling like, he feel like people might look at it as he only hired her because of the fact that she's his wife and you know he was trying to explain to them you know basically like what i said before you know she knows how he operates she knows what he approves of and don't doesn't approve of um and one lady and then somebody else brought up the fact that you know because of you know the scripture that says that the woman shall not use her authority over the man and so she was saying a lot of the old school people might not they might not respect her the same way they respect him because she's a woman especially the men they may not respect her the way she they respect him because she's a woman and then she's younger than them too, girl. They ain't having it. Um, so he, you know, he's kind of thinking about it. Doc, I was about to say Dr. Jones. Um, Bishop Jones meet up with Dominique and Dietrich. They have dinner. They discuss why Dietrich is not preaching. He tells, you know, and he basically been saying the same thing throughout the whole episode you know he's just focusing on singing right now he tells bishop that they married bishop was you know he was like i approve of it you know they say that they're still gonna have an official ceremony bishop is still wants to uh origin not originate it officiate it is that the right word well he's gonna be the one that uh he's gonna be the preacher i say that i don't know what what's the correct word to use um then Dietrich brings up what is what was up with the bet between Dr. Pastor Ron and about him marrying Loretta. Um, but then of course they bring you know he's like I don't know yada yada yada, and you know Bishop you know Dietrich was basically saying you may not have time for a woman because you're so busy you know how he was like how many places have you been this week and he said he went to Ghana Boston now he's in New Orleans yada 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 and you know Dietrich basically said the same thing that's probably why you still see him because you're focusing more energy on that versus you know trying to get get you a woman. Um, the Essence Festival, Bishop Noah Jones was on some show with Al Sharpton and somebody else. Then he preached Dietrich's song, He Is Able. And, you know, Dominique was just saying that, you know, when she sees him on stage, she know that that's what he was called to do. And she was saying maybe he may eventually go back into the preaching world. But who knows? Um, so Pastor, uh, what is his name? Pastor Cheney and his wife meet up, and you know he's basically like the you know the board member was not here for me hiring you as my executive pastor. She you know breaks down and like you know I feel like I can do this and yada 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 and this and, that and the other because I think she feels like that the people feel like she's gonna try to be more of a hindrance to him than a help to him, and she wants people to understand that she's you know she's only gonna push him to do more. So, but he ends up giving her the position anyway. He say, with you on the team, I feel like I can take over the world. And he's like, but right now I want to take you. So then they start kissing. And I'm like, that's a little bit inappropriate to be doing in a sanctuary. I understand y'all married and stuff, but no. You know, so then they kissing or whatever. I was like, okay, go ahead. Now that uh, that, past, that past the study going to be locked for a couple hours. I'm just saying. But anyway. <laughs> um... Bishop Jones meets with therapists. They discuss Loretta. He brings up the fact that his mom abandoned him at seven years old, dropped him off at the grandparents' ha grandma's house to live with the grandma till he was seventeen. She was saying that she feel like 
Yeah. You know, all, all the women that come in his life, he's looking for them to fill that mother role. And I think that's one reason why he's not moving forward with Loretta because he sees her more as a mother than a potential mate. You know, um, the therapist basically like you need to take some time away from Loretta to, so you can get yourself together because you can't be an effective husband and an effective mate if you still got dealing with all these issues. And that's probably why he why he divorced. He got divorced his first wife. Um because of those issues and what probably happened is he was probably trying to keep them keep them you know deep down instead of letting them come out and now that stuff is coming back to harm um uh, so then pastor john smith's with the red i guess it's the next day or might know i think it was that same day because i think he had the same clothes on and you know he's basically telling her that he's gonna need to take some time away from her um you know, so he can get himself together, and she's basically like, it's okay, you know, okay. I said, like, I support you if it's going to be better for us, and he's basically like, this ain't got nothing to do with that, this is about me, you know, getting myself together, and so, you know, she felt some type of way about that, I think in her mind, she probably feel like, you know, if he go, you know, this, him doing this is probably going to push us further apart, we ain't going to never be together, but if it's meant to happen, it'll happen, um, but this, you know, this was a good episode. You know, I, it was, you know, it gave me what I need. I'm, all I know is next episode, I, I know I'm going to have something to say about Pastor John, Pastor John, about Pastor Jay and his wife going to get tattoos. Like, they already have tattoos. It's one thing if you had tattoos before you got saved and then you come in church. I mean, you know, that you can't do nothing about that. But when you a pastor, a preacher, not even as a pastor, but a preacher, period, or even a Christian. And then you go on and getting tattoos, and it's like, like past, like my sister, Lady Maisha said, you know, people might look at that and say, well, if I can get a tattoo, I can drink, or I can smoke, I can have sex. I mean, I'm just not here for it. And then Pastor Cheney talking about he going to get a tattoo, like. But anyway, y'all tell me what y'all thought about it, and I'll check y'all out later. Peace. Oh, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Also, check out MikeB801. He does reviews for Pisha Bella. And also, check out The Ghetto View. That's T-H-A, not T-H-E.